Okay, so I wasn't planning on making a video today or anything, but there has been a lot of changes within my life and within the collective that I feel that needs to be addressed or alternatively, I just need to get this off my chest. Take it how you will. This could be a message for you. This could be a message just for myself, too. Which is fine. Like, I, I could use this channel to, you know, just talk to myself, right? I'm not. Anyway, okay. <laughs> I am talking to myself right now. But there's been a lot of changes within my life and within the collective energy field as we move into... Pisces placement. Um, it's going to cause a lot of really, really, really intense emotional roller coaster rides. And I'm experiencing one right now. So, for the past two years, I've been in a relationship, an off and on relationship with who I thought was my twin flame traveled cro across the country to meet her. We came back here to Oregon, right? Started living together. It was probably the worst decision. Worst, best decision because a lot of good things have happened. My hair is messing with me. I'm just gonna leave it down. A lot of things have come out of it. Like, good things, positive things, positive aspects in me me finding my purpose in life, which is to share how I process through hard times, you know. Just to give the collective a little bit more of a you are not alone feeling. And it's a good practice just to, you know, talk to somebody. Just let this, let all these emotions that you're feeling out into the world so that you can actually process through it you know, with ease and less tense buildup within you. Where was I at? Okay, so it's been off and on. Um, and that's what usually happens with twin flame relationships too, is that they teach you aspects of you that you need to let go of, that you need to come to terms with. I moved, I moved the stand. That you need to come to terms with inside of yourself so that you can be free and that this lesson can be learned so that it won't happen to another relationship, another situation that you're in. And I've been shown a lot within me that I need to change, that I need to drop um, certain certain aspects of myself that I've been holding on to from past um, trauma, past horrible relationships, past anything. You know, like, it has shown me that I've been holding on to a lot of stuff over the years, which is good. I mean, it's, it's not really a wise decision to never face your shadow. It is a less wise decision to think that you're perfect, that you have, you are one with the universe, that there is nothing in you that you need to let go of. Throughout your entire life, you are going to be letting go of certain aspects of you that you thought were, were you, that weren't you. To begin with. It's a learning process. But right now, currently, we have broken up. We have kind of split paths, if you will. And she is, how do I say this, with a lighter heart. She is faced with her own traumas right now. 
and she is victimizing herself and situations and choosing not to let the past go. As am I, too, though. There's a lot of stuff in me that I'm choosing to hold on to from that relationship that I need to drop, that I need to let go of. I know that she is no longer my path. As much as my egoic mind wants to think differently and wants to hold hope for the future that was never created with love. It was created from trauma. It was created from pain. It was created from a codependent I need you in my life. I need you to feel happy, or I need you around me to feel happy about myself. I need to feel validated. But that's just not the case. We need to validate ourselves. We need to be okay with being alone. We need to know that certain people come into your life for certain reasons to touch a part of you and to bring awareness to certain things in you that you need to drop. And it doesn't mean that the other person is a bad person. It just means that we put too much identity. We put too much identity into the emotions that we feel. Once we start putting our identities into the emotions we feel, we start separating ourselves from the outside world. We start separating ourselves from the idea that there are certain parts of us that we need to release, that we need to grow from. Which will create an illusion of separation with you and everybody in your life everybody like for me right now I have taken my energy back from certain people i.e. my mother and i.e. from my past relationship I have taken my energy back and have started to put that energy into something that truly matters to me which is healing the collective which is sharing what I am going through which is showing you that you are not alone as much as you feel like you are. And trust me, I feel it too sometimes, most of the time. I feel that there's something outside of me that if I attain it, that I will be happy. And that's just not the case. And my soul knows that. My, my higher self tells me all the time that the happiness is already within me. The answers that I've seen I'm seeking is already truly within me, within my reach, as long as I reach inwards instead of outwards. My happiness is not indicative of somebody else in my life. My happiness is not based upon outside stimuli. It is based upon my internal world and what we need to realize is hey, we have complete control over our internal world as long as we do the necessary the, the necessary healing to dismantle all the ideas of what we thought we were and that's a very hard process to do because nobody wants to see you know the bad things that we do Nobody wants to understand that we are still traumatized, that we are still holding on to certain aspects of the past and over-identifying with them, if you get what I'm saying. And in this current situation that I am being presented with, it is showing me that I need to drop expectations of certain things and to really focus on my internal healing as opposed to healing my outside world because my outside world is not going to be healed 
until my internal world is healed. And that might be a scary process. It's particularly a scary process to my ego because it does not want to be dismantled. It wants to hold on to the identity of me. It wants to tell me that all my trauma in my past is me. It wants to hold on to the power that it has over me. And if I am taking back my power from outside worlds, from outside people, from outside situations. Can you just make my eye red? I did. Don't rub your eyes. Where was I at? If I take my healing as an internal sense, instead of trying to change and control the outcomes of my external world, that is when the external world starts reflecting, starts reflecting your insides. The reason that my life seems so chaotic right now to me and my perception is because I have still over-identified, I am still over-identifying with everything outside of me instead of looking deep into myself and finding where I'm truly unhappy inside instead of outside of me. And that's what, that's what everybody really needs to understand is that situations come up in your life that may or may not look appealing, look peaceful, because right now my life is a mess, man. My life is a mess. I have no job. I have bills to pay. I have blah, 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 blah. Everybody in my life is leaving. Everybody in my life is being pushed away. But on my insides, I feel a sort of calming presence within me. As soon as I stop identifying with the emotions and the feelings that I'm feeling and start identifying with what my spirit instead of my body feels, my spirit knows that this path that I am on is to lead me to exponential spiritual growth. But I need to get through it with a positive mindset instead of a negative mindset I mean I really don't want to say that but that's also my ego saying don't say that you are not negative I can be negative I can see that my life is falling apart and on the inside I'm tearing up and bottling up and not being allowed to release and not being allowed to be heard and not being allowed to have my emotions in my current state invalidated by outside people. But like I said before, my spirit knows that whatever I am going through at this current moment in my life is for the greater good of myself and my sense of self. For one day, one day soon, once I get over this once I get over this attachment to external stimuli, I will be free to explore more of my internal worlds. And I'm a Pisces by nature. I'm, I am made to <coughs> walk the line of the physical reality and the spiritual. A lot of people say I'm in my head most of the, most of the time. And that is not wrong, but that is not 100% correctly true. It's not that I'm in my head most times, it's that I am battling between what I see and what I feel. And that's the illusion of Maya. 
is knowing that whatever you see on the outside of you is a complete and other reflection of what you are going through on the inside. You cannot change your outside reality until you start changing your internal world. So we just need to breathe, we need to... We need to breathe through these waves of emotional energy that is coming in. Every time we go up, we need to take a big, big, big breath in because we don't know how long we're gonna stay underneath. So in the moments of clarity, in the moments of uh, complete positivity and peace within you, remember that that is your actual self. We as humans, and we as spiritual beings, we as a mind-body-spirit complex, have multiple levels of bodies within us. We have the physical, we have the emotional body, we have the etheric body, we have the auric body. We have all of these. And we are too focused into our physical bodies. That thing over there hurt me in some way, so I'm gonna hold on to that. But that's not truly you. That is a part of you. But the awareness behind the, if you sit down just for five minutes, close your eyes and just focus on inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, and say it to yourself too. I am inhaling or in breath or breathing in something that you know, teaches your mind that you are doing this to bring more awareness to the act of breathing itself. Conscious breathing. In a few minutes, you will start to feel a sense of being without you do not need your physical body to be. You are a spirit. You are consciousness itself. That is your natural state, complete and other bliss and, and peace. It may seem like your world is falling apart around you. It may seem that people, you are losing people. It may seem that you are losing your safety net. But you are not alone. And the more that we heal, the more stimuli comes in. The more that we are shown that we have leveled up in a sense of what we can take, what we can learn more about within ourselves. Anyway, you are not alone. I am going through this too, and it's very intense. But I am here for you. I am here for the collective. I am here for myself. And it may seem hard sometimes. It may seem like you don't know what's going on. It may seem like everything is just complete in other chaos. I did a reading the other night and I got uh, chaos. I got chaos in my future week reading. And look, I got chaos. But through the chaos, we find our own inner peace. We find that we can actually handle a lot more than what our egoic mind is telling us that we can. So take your pain, like I'm doing right now, 
and show people that you are not alone. Vulnerability with others is the key to connectivity with others. You can't be all light and love all the time. You have to take the shadow. You have to show your shadow sometimes so that it can be shown in reflection to you. Anyway, I love you. I hope you have found some clarity within this. Click that subscribe button because I'm going to be doing this more and more, just like daily vlog videos. And then hit that like too. Now help me and the channel grow too so that I can, you know, help more people in the process of spiritual and physical development. Anyway, I love you. I see you. I hope all is well, and I hope you are riding these waves with a sense of curiosity and fun, because it's about to get even more intense. Bye.